Hey, what's going on guys? Terribly Tactical back at the tabletop. I know we've had a brief interlude full of, you know, jam-packed pol political videos and, and all that stuff. And they're still going to keep on coming as long as the anti-gunners and Trump, the turncoat, turncoat Trump, uh, hashtag turncoat Trump on all of Twitter, Instagram, anything you could hashtag anything on because he is stripping us of our gun rights. And uh, I'm not going to stand for it, and neither should you. But enough with the soapbox. We are back at the tabletop talking about an oldie but a goodie. Something that I really, really like. Uh, it's very useful, very collectible. Not worth a terrible amount of money at the point. But uh, some of them are, depending on where it's made and, and this, that, and the other thing, and the variation. But they're only going to go up in value once the surplus drives dries up because it's a surplus Polish P64 Makarov, Makarov, however you want to say it, it's a Mac, it's a Makarov, um, this is the box it came in, cardboard box, it was imported by IO, which is kind of putting a bad taste in my mouth because IO makes a bunch of garbage and their CEO is an idiot, but they didn't make the gun, they just imported it and I'm glad they did because now it's in my hands, so we'll get into it. This is just how it came. Uh, bought it at my local shop on consignment with the gun and two mags. So we'll get the box out of the way and we'll talk about the important stuff. There we go. It's a beautiful gun in pretty good shape for how old it is. This particular one was manufactured in 1974. That Circle 11 is the Rodham factory. I believe in Poland. Uh, they're known for putting out very high quality small arms. It is a matching gun, frame to slide, so that's nice as well. Kind of give you some macros of it. Nice little look of it. I really like the P64s. Um, I, I believe they're very, very well made, and I'm, I'm a huge James Bond fan, and out of all the Makarovs, um, they all draw influence from the Walther PP, the PPK, stuff like that. This one in the size and just the overall um, look of it, the overall aesthetics, it to me is the closest looking to a Walther PP or PPK, and seeing as those are unobtainium, and if you find one, then you're paying big, big bucks. Uh, for the price I paid for this, this will have to be a substitute in the meantime. But yeah, two mags. They are six round mags, so six plus one. It is a smaller gun. Um, I have larger hands, but with the with the pinky rest, I get a full three on there. It's ergonomic. You know, you can kind of see from that angle. In the hand, it looks pretty much like a Walther PP. like that a lot. Also features the same safety decocker that's slide mounted as the Walthers and most all other Makarovs do. Um, again, this is the Polish. It's got those ugly IO import marks. Marks, excuse me. Um, but Radom Poland, 9x18 Makarov, and then it says 9mm. Do not put a 9mm in here. I promise you, you'll do it once. Uh, and then it is the model P64. So, the bluing is, is really, really well done on this. I mean, it does have some holster wear. You know, on the muzzle, it's got a couple little scratches and dings. You know, it's not perfect, but this is an old gun, possibly used in service um, overseas, whether it be in the military or the police force. And these things have a lot of history, and they're very collectible. You can get them from a bunch of different countries. You know, I have an East German. I got a preview, uh, preview, <laughs> a previous video on that. Uh, those are supposedly the more desirable ones and they bring a little bit more money as far as collecting and stuff like that and uh, they're all well-made guns super reliable and uh, a bunch of different countries made them so china bulgaria poland east germany russia you know a, a bunch of different um hungary i believe the feg is hungarian i believe you know there's and i would like to have uh, a specimen an example from each country you know, collect them like that. Because as of now, they're not too expensive in the least bit, especially for what you get. The piece of history, uh, a very well put together firearm, something that's proven in military service and law enforcement capacity. And they're pretty inexpensive. You can usually find them for 350 and under, depending on what country it's from. Um, 
there's a couple different variants you know of certain country models whether it's like the target or you know the standard issue and if it comes with an extra mag or it comes with the holster and the cleaning rod and stuff like that like i showed you guys this one just came with the extra mag so either way for the price i paid i'm more than happy i think it's in really good shape you know it's not perfect but you can't expect it to be because it's a military surplus handgun i just love the history behind it it's perfectly functional um and just just really nice i mean a lot of guys carry these as concealed carry pieces i mean not just this one specifically but makarovs in general because they're slim they're they're more powerful than a 380 the 9x18 is in between a 9 millimeter which is 9x19 again 9x18 for the makarovs and then a 9x17 is a 380 so it's a little bit more powerful and uh better ballistically speaking than a 380 acp and the guns are usually a relatively good size they're all metal construction they're durable they have a fixed barrel blowback design like you find on most 380s and stuff like that so it's very inherently accurate and extremely reliable and we'll kind of get to those features later on show you how to break it down and this that and the other thing but in the meantime speaking of the 9x18 i mentioned this in my previous macro video uh, it was designed so enemy forces could not use their ammo in enemy guns to kill, you know, their own troops. So, hence the 9 by 18 A lot of com block countries, you know, were using that. Um, like I mentioned before, Bulgaria, Russia, China, East Germany, you know, Poland, all that stuff. Uh, it was designed, this one specifically, the Polish P-64, was designed by four Polish military officers. Uh, their last names were CZAK, which is kind of cool because we all know CZ and we all love AKs. You know, Niet, rifle is fine type of thing. Um, but yeah, CZAK, so if you ever hear of this pistol being referred to as the CZAK, that's where it comes from. Uh, the P-64, like most military handguns, the model number is the year it was adopted or put into service. So it was adopted in 1964 up until about 1983 and is still being used in some capacity within law enforcement and military applications. So that's pretty cool. Um, and like I said, you can find these things for like 250 and under sometimes, sometimes a little bit more depending on where you're at and the availability and, you know, grab them because these are great guns. There's a wide variety of commercial loadings out there. Hornady makes stuff for it. Pretty sure Federal makes stuff for it. You can get PPU, you can get Fioki, you can get a lot of stuff as far as ammo goes, both range and defensive loads. And uh, in a gun like this, you can use ball ammo as a defensive load. You don't have to worry too, too much about over penetration and stuff like that. I mean, they're great little pe uh, prepper guns, have a bunch of them stored away. They're great little carry guns, just workhorses, and they're collectible. They're just really cool. They got a lot of history with them, very well made. You know, this one's got, I got to oil it up and wipe it down a little bit. It's got smudges and fingerprints all over it, but the bluing on this thing, you know, minus the wear, which is a given, being a surplus gun, I mean, the bluing is really, really nice. It's kind of a deeper blue. It's, it's just a beautiful gun, and it's sweet. You know, I, I could pretend that i'm james bond with this because i don't have the cash to fork over for a pp so it is what it is um there was two different models originally uh to be decided upon to be adopted for the military service this is the model m um it was originally chambered for 380 i forget the other model number i want to say w but i could be wrong and uh they they chose the model m but they rechambered it for the 9 by 18 makarov it's a blowback design, so you will experience more recoil just because of the design of the gun and how it operates. But being an all-steel gun, it does help soak some of that up. However, it can be a little bit snappy in some people's hands, depending on your technique, you know, the strength of your hands and stuff like that. But it is what it is. It did replace the 762 by 25 Tokarev or Takarov or however you want to say it. You know, I'm an, I'm an American, so I, I speak Americanese. And uh, that, that round is a smoking round. And in a lot of loadings for that round, it is uh, level 2 and even, I think, level 3A. Uh, it'll go through soft armor is what I'm trying to say in, in some of those loadings. But it is a smaller bullet, and it's moving a lot faster. They actually chose this with the wider, heavier projectile that's moving slower to replace that gun. Um, 
The Tokarov is a lot bigger pistol. It's kind of 1911-esque, but not really. Uh, if you ever had one or saw one or shot one, you can kind of get what I'm saying. It's a single action pistol. The ergonomics are somewhat similar. Uh, it's a single stack. It's very thin, uh, pretty pointable, uh, as is this. Um, but it's a much larger profile of a gun. So choosing this, you get a smaller profile and it's lighter at 21.2 ounces being all steel. That's pretty good. Uh, it's a decent sized handgun. It's probably, as far as profile, a little bit bigger maybe than a, a Glock 26, but thinner. Definitely thinner, nice thin slide. These are wraparound plastic checkered grips. Actually do provide a decent amount of grip. Uh, these ones are worn down a little bit, but as as far as the feel in the hand, it's perfect. Even for a guy with, with bigger hands like, like I have. So, um, It is a double single action pistol. So, the first round is double action. And then the second shot and all the subsequent shots will be single action. There's a problem though. It is solvable, but from the factory, how they were designed... The double action trigger pull on this gun is atrocious. Uh, anywhere from like 20 to 30 pounds and anywhere in between. I mean, it is long and heavy and then it kind of gets to like a halfway point where you think the gun's actually broken and it's, it's not working and then you squeeze through and then you flinch the crap out of it. So, let's see here. All right, we're empty. So you're gonna first double action. You get to about here, okay? Get to about here, and you really got to squeeze to get through that. I mean, it's it's all of 25 pounds at least, um, which sucks. But in single action, it's actually about four and a half pounds. You got a little bit of slop here, a little bit of take up, but there's no weight to it. And then amazingly crisp break, especially compared to that crazy double action. However, this being a military sidearm, Traditionally, they're carried with a loaded magazine inside the gun and an empty chamber. So you would, you know, skin that smoke wagon, rack the slide, and then you'd be in single action. So you wouldn't even have to contend with that heavy, atrocious double action pull, which is nice. And it makes sense, you know, military handguns are always ridden with safeties, heavy trigger pulls, safety, decockers, this, that, and the other thing, Mag magazine disconnects in some cases, uh, which this does not have, which is nice. Um... The slide lock also acts as the ejector as well, which is a cool part of the design. Uh, and we also have a three position safety. So we showed you how, how the trigger pull is. So say it was loaded, I could put it into the half safe mode where the trigger's dead, but the hammer is back. And uh, then if you'll see, the lighting's not the best. I can decock it. And so then, now we're on safe and we have a dead trigger, just like in the half position with the safety. And then if I wanted to shoot, flip it off safe, and then it's that first long, heavy double action trigger pull. So it's a three position safety, even though the safety is on in the halfway position and even when it's down um, completely, uh, word on the street is these are not drop safe. So that's another reason why you would primarily carry this. Uh, you know, loaded magazine, empty chamber, you know, and then you, you, you load it when you have to, you know, do the work you need to, and then, you know, either decock it, put it away on safe or empty it, you know, top the magazine back off and put it back into the condition that you'd be carrying in a military capacity. Um, speaking of other features, it is a European style heel release magazine. So you don't have any push button or trigger guard release. You're going to push that little lever back this way and then that's going to allow the magazine to come out so there we have the, our uh, two six round mags there's that like I said no magazine disconnect really really nice single action trigger pull love that um, but what I was trying to show you before I got myself a little bit off track is the slide lock acts as the ejector which is pretty cool you're not really going to be able to see in there but there's no way to drop the slide unless the gun was loaded. So you'd have to take the magazine out and then lower the slide if it was empty and you wanted the slide to go home. You know, safety decocker, now we're in safe, first double action, then single action, 
all that good stuff. So it is an older design. It's a very simple design. It's a very rugged and reliable design, and it's proven. Um, like I said, a lot of guys carry them for for concealed carry. As long as you have a proper holster for it, which there's plenty available, and a good gun belt, and you're not really too worried about dropping the gun and this, that, and the other thing. Because if you think about it, a Series 70 1911, which is my favorite, is also not technically drop safe. So I've been known to carry those before. I still do from time to time. I shoot them a lot. Uh, it's my favorite handgun. And there is the potential if that thing did drop that it could go off. So it's kind of just one of the things with the older designs that you have to, you know, think about and be, you know, conscious with. But, I mean, they, people have been getting it done for years uh, in that capacity, in that format, with those kinds of guns. And, you know, with minimal problems. So there's something to be said about it. But at the same time, at the end of the day, not the biggest deal, guys. Um, loaded chamber indicator another safety feature on it I don't have any rounds at my disposal right now to show you but this little silver ball back here if the chamber is loaded it will protrude so that is a nice feature you can see it during the day or given your lighting situation it is also shiny so it does gather light pretty well and you can also feel that it's tactile uh, you do have speaking of the rear of the gun a dovetailed rear sight which can be adjusted for windage obviously not elevation I do like the checkering, cross-cut checkering across the top strap of the gun on the slide to cut down on glare. That's a nice touch, but you do just have a milled-in front sight that is non-adjustable. You can shave it down or file it and do whatever you need to do. I'm just going to leave it, obviously. Uh, I have not shot this thing yet. I definitely plan on doing so when I can find some cheap 9x18 because this stuff's not the cheapest ammo. Uh, you can usually find it for like under 18 bucks a box of 50 uh, if you get some steel case stuff, you can get um, about 12, 13 bucks a box, and uh, that's decent. But I've been stocking up on other ammo with all the uh, the banning and stuff going on. So hopefully soon we'll be able to take this beauty out to the range. A couple more little, uh, just little tidbits about it uh, as far as specs go. The barrel itself is 3.3 inches long. The overall length is 6.3 inches, and the height is 4.6 inches. So it's a very packable package. You know, easy to conceal carry, easy to put in a bug out bag, something like that. Extremely reliable. Again, with the magazine capacity of six plus one, that's more than enough. Um, you can change magazines relatively easy enough. Not as easy as a traditional push button style, American Americanized style, or like a, an H and K with the trigger guard release, but it is what it is, guys. You know, it, it's an older design. The thing was made in the '70s, and uh, we'll show you how to take this thing apart here. You're gonna pull the trigger. You make it make it safe, obviously, and we know it is. You're gonna pull the trigger guard down, move it over, just like a Walther PP. Back, up. And forward and I apologize if you guys hear the laundry going off in the background but it is what it is we're uh, getting it done here at the terribly tactical channel so look at the inside of the slide very very simple not the cleanest you can definitely see some machine marks but it is what it is uh, there's your fixed barrel design so it is integral to the frame and uh, it's sturdy and it stays in one spot it doesn't unlock or move like a browning linkless design it's fixed just like a revolver and other 380s and, and types of pistols and then here's your recoil spring that does come off but very inherently accurate because of that design and with the simplicity of it it's extremely simple rugged and reliable now watch me struggle uh getting it back together here now behind the tripod we'll see if we can do it Probably not. Probably not. There we go. So then you, you wiggle it back on there. Move the trigger guard back. Function check. There you go. Very simple maintenance. Very simple field strip and takedown. Very reliable. Inherently accurate design. Extremely collectible. Pretty inexpensive. And just overall, super cool. Check them out, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, the affiliate links, the Patreon link, 
uh, will be down in the description box below. Please like, share, comment, subscribe if you guys like the videos. If you got any input, constructive criticism, if you guys just want to hate, feel free. Um, also, join the GOA, please. They have done and are doing more for us than the NRA. The NRA is actually on the other side as of late, as it would seem, and the GOA is actually out there fighting. So please use the, the link in the description box as well and join the GOA. I think it's only 20 bucks a year. And uh, for that, I don't get any kickback. But but if you guys want to shop at Forge from Freedom, get some sweet uh, gun people apparel, feel free. I get a little bit of a kickback from that. And then if you guys feel to donate to the Patreon account, uh, the link for that in the description box is below. So I appreciate it, guys. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope I didn't ramble too much. Hope you guys learned a little bit. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.